Hi Baz, I have to pop in here quickly to kind of give like a content warning. I read a lot of very old young adult fiction. I was really shocked <laughs> at how many slurs I used. I do say the slurs in the video. I have muted out the ones that I don't feel comfortable actually saying but i have also put text on the screen so you know which is which because otherwise it'll get a bit confusing with what i'm talking about because the slurs stem from racist slurs homophobic slurs and ableist slurs so i feel like because there's such a broad spectrum of different kinds of slurs i have to at least put something there so you know which slur i'm referring to any of the slurs that you do hear me say are slurs that I have, you know, faced <laughs> in my life because I'm disabled and queer, basically. This is just a content warning. If you're not okay with slurs or anything like that, maybe this video is just not for you this week. I am saying them in quoting context, not in like a, I'm just saying the slurs. I am quoting from these books. Thank you. And uh, I hope you watch a different video or another video or if you watch this video i hope you enjoy it and have some good insight but i felt like i had to do a content warning i didn't feel comfortable just sticking a load of slurs in a video and not warning you beforehand so there we go thank you very much hey pals it's me again bringing you my early 2000s teen dream reading vlog <laughs> basically it was a wild ride S some books i had a great time some books were really bad <laughs> like really bad so i'm gonna take you through it with me you know um for the most part the first book i read was my mad fat diary by ray earl I watched the TV show years ago. I just kind of saw this in the charity shop and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I think I paid 50p or a pound, I don't remember, for the book. So, you know, I had a great time reading it for the most part. Just need to read this line real quick. <laughs> I just need to read this out. So there were really some moments in this book they just like, what? And this is, and this is one of them, but in like a, uh, very low key way. Bethany and me sat down today and analysed the coffee session with Luke yesterday, and she reported back the following: Luke is undecided about the whole relationship issue. Luke likes me and thinks I'm a good laugh, but thinks I'm a bit insecure. Luke feels under a lot of pressure to do well in his A levels, as he would like to be in marketing. What? <laughs> marketing okay all right well i couldn't tell you why but i do love me some grumpy angry boys haddock we still don't know his real name he's just called haddock same he's a bit of a dickhead but seems to be one of the only people who's actually nice to ray and i mean you can tell he's obviously into her he likes a fat bird you know i might not be a fat bird but i'm a fat mb so hello Hello. Just me. Just me. Right, the one thing I'm getting fucking sick and tired of with this book is that every single boy she fancies has directly told her he does not fancy her and just sees her as like a mate. Like every single one of them. The first one only went out with her and kissed her because he didn't want people to think he was gay. The second one broke up with his girlfriend to date her friend. And then the one that's about to happen has said over and over and over again that they are just mates. And she only likes him because he's the next available boy anyway. She also keeps fancying people who already have girlfriends. And he has also, this one's also already said that if the friend of Ray, the main girl, basically he said that he would date Ray's mate if she was single and now she's single and now Ray wants to date him even though she's been saying oh he's not my type 
She's changed her mind now because he's the only available one left, I guess. Just the fact that she's like decidedly ignoring every single person's upfront. I do not fancy you. Why are you doing that to yourself? Like if they didn't say that, I get it. If they hadn't told you they don't fancy you, I get it. If they've never said that, fine. But they have all said it. I just, I don't understand. It's just the same plot. Rinsed and repeated for several hundred pages. How many pages is there? Like 350-ish. Take a hint, Ray. Take a hint. Fucking hell. Uh, and also, like, there was just a lot of lesbo there's a lot oh, there was just a lot of ray saying her best friend is so gorgeous and then being like i'm not a lesbo though i'm not a lesbo i'm not a lesbo and i know this was based in the 80s uh, based on real life but you know um and i know it was early 2000s as well but i don't know if i wrote a fucking memoir based on what i was like in the early 2000s there were definitely some things i would be taking out because they're just not funny and not okay so even though i did enjoy the book i was just a bit like uh, that was unnecessary you know then i was reading gossip girl which was a great time it was quite similar to the show except maybe like a like a slightly different order of things happening early 2000s ya just did not give a fuck like there were so many fucks in Gossip Girl. Everyone smoked cigarettes as well, which was not in the show. Everyone smoked cigarettes and drank black coffee. You know, typical pro Anna bullshit <laughs> of that time period, basically. So I felt like Gossip Girl sort of brought me back to what it was actually like in the early 2000s as a teenager. So. I really enjoyed it for that reason and there wasn't a lot of like like they didn't use like slurs or anything like most of the books that I have picked up so that was that was like nice <laughs> to not suddenly be have your eyes assaulted by different kinds of slurs and <laughs> for no reason but I had a great time and I actually really think I would like to continue reading the series it was just kind of like a fun time. I had a great time reading that one. I'm editing right now. I literally just filmed this and I can't believe I fucking forgot. Gossip Girl is also like gay. It's high key gay as fuck. Like, that's my dog. Being rude. Everyone fancies Serena, including the women. Like, including Blair. Blair and Serena, spoiler alert, actually kissed pre-book starting but it's talked about um as if like Blair is questioning her sexuality a little bit and I've read in other places that Chuck is supposed to be canon bisexual as well so like oh and also Jenny is really fucking gay over Serena too like just everyone is in love with Serena which isn't enough of like a thing in the show but like it was I think that was the thing that just made me fall in love with this book because I I love Blair and Chuck. I know they are fucking horrible people and characters, but I love them. And I just think that this added layer in the book of them both being actually possibly queer is amazing. And I can't believe I completely fucking forgot to say it <laughs> as I filmed 10 minutes ago, but there you go. Then I read... Uh, Meg Cabot's mediator. I had a lot to say in the clips that will be inserted here. So I'm a bit over halfway through Mediator, the first book. I remember loving this as a teenager. Reading it now, not so much. I don't like the main character very much. The main character is kind of like... One of them sarky edgelords that are not done very well very often. It's not often I read something with characters like this <laughs> that I feel like they've been done justice. They always end up being kind of like a shitty edgelord who kind of just says rude offensive things 
semi regularly like it's cool and it's just it's not it's boring and I don't like it <sighs> so really I think once I finish this book so I don't have a lot left I don't know if I'll continue this series which sucks because like I found the princess diaries so I read the first book of that this year I found that book really funny interesting kind of woke considering it's a book from the early 2000s um and kind of like politically involved this kind of swings the other way <laughs> there's a lot of references that just feel really offensive like there's a there's something about how being called a queen in brooklyn isn't a compliment and i feel like the only connection that has is to drag queens i don't like that <laughs> like she moves to california um that has a lot of colonial colonization history with native americans for a start she keeps swapping between calling them native americans and like i don't know why she keeps swapping between the two pick one and pick the one that is correct you know you know like her main love interest is a latin ex ghost man of age 20 and she is is she a sophomore i've forgotten but what probably 16 years old and there's already like a hinted romance straight away and not only is he 20 but add 150 years onto that because he died a long time ago and like that's that was my one of my big points with twilight it's like no edward is not just a teenager he's been alive for several hundred years that's not that's not okay i don't like that you're gross and like kind of back on the character the main character's like edge lordness for a second like <sighs> she kind of has this thing of like i'm so normal i'm so normal my poor mom i'm i'm awkward not like other girls but i'm really normal like every other girl it's like again pick one or just don't say either of those things shut the fuck up there's a lot of expedition in between when people speak so instead of having like a normal paced conversation it's dragged out for several pages because in between people speaking there's just a lot of useless shit <laughs> so that's a writing problem but it's a lot to do with the character as well because it's all in first person and she's like i don't get in i don't like i always keep to myself i don't really talk to people don't like to cause a fuss or start fights and then she just fucking starts fights over like fucking nothing like the fight she just started in class was because some girl was like i believe that the statue that was beheaded was beheaded by angry angels because father clementine or <laughs> whatever his name is won't let our classmate that killed herself have a funeral here and she's like what a dumb bitch it, it's obviously not angels because it was me and uh, the ghost of the dead girl and she's like just fucking fights this girl in front of class and it's like that doesn't make any sense because like <laughs> if ghosts exist <laughs> how how hard is it to believe that angels possibly exist? I think it's dumb. She thinks that the angels came down and wrecked the school. Yeah. But I wouldn't have fucking argued with her in front of the entire fucking class about it. Because it's just like, let her, let her believe her dumb shit. Just let her believe her dumb shit. Her friend fucking killed herself, you know? You know? Like, it, it don't... It do not make sense. I don't, you know, I just don't like her very much. R.I.P. One of the book series that I that got me into reading in the first place because it's shit shit it just gets worse it just gets worse
The early 2000s just really loved their ableist slurs. Just all the time. Like, most of the books I have read <laughs> use the word spaz. Or some kind of version of that. And I literally just... Just read it in this one, so that's great. She's doing Brazilian voodoo. That's for an exorcism. She's literally at a Catholic school. But you know, gotta get that cultural appropriation in there a little bit more, don't we? This is something that bothers me a lot in storytelling. It happens very often and it just doesn't really make any sense to me so a chapter has ended throughout the beach sunset a new chapter starts it's at midnight but then the next like four pages are what happened between the previous chapter ending and this one starting why didn't you just go chronologically i mean it ended with the sun setting and she was out with her friends, the next chapter could have started and she arrived home for dinner and just gone from there, rather than skipping ahead to only skip back again to then, like, get back to that point in time. I just don't, don't understand why writers do that. What was the point? Um, but yeah, this was like the biggest fucking disappointment. Loads of slurs. They also used the word, which I don't think I included in my clips, as well as things like spaz. Along with a lot of like racist shit. Like fucking hell, Maggie Cabot, what are you doing? Hello? Hello? Come here. Okay, well done then. Wow. Remember the days when YA books were only 200 pages long? R.I.P. There's a bit in the filming as well in my clips that I turn and look at my phone, like, really eerily. That's because I swear to God I saw, like, a figure or a ghost. So... It's spooky season, bitches. Ghosts are haunting me. I had really fond memories of this book series. So I'm just really let down. And I don't know if I'm going to continue reading it. Because I have one through five. I don't know if I'm going to continue reading the series. Because this first book was just such a fucking fail. It was dreadful. And then onto sort of like my last. But also first series. Books. Whatever. I read The Princess Diaries. I read two of the books. So I read the first Princess Diaries earlier in the year. I was just going to sort of include talking about it. And I did in some clips when I was talking about Mediator. This was also by Meg Cabot as well. And like book one was fantastic. I had a great time. That's what made me go, I'm going to pick up the other books in the series. Again, I got this in one of my local book charity shops. So I got them really cheap. <sighs> For a start, somehow, <laughs> instead of reading book two, I read book five. So I have a lot of problems with this book. So I didn't realise I'd skipped three books, which I would say is kind of bad. <laughs> it just kind of felt like there was, you know, a, a gap in time from when the last book ended and the next one began. Um, and to be honest, not a lot happened between that book and this one. And also this book is takes place within a week, like 
seven to ten days and I know these books are a lot shorter and they're like a bit over 200 pages but it's the same with Mediator it took place in literally like five days I'm not a fan of Meg Callot's pacing it's just it feels either too rushed or too slow or it feels like it's trying to be too much in like too small like amount of time like I wanted more to happen <laughs> but you know what can happen when you literally see this character every single day like that doesn't happen so much in books anymore so I don't know whether that's just me or whether I just really don't like this pacing and there's an issue with the pacing now let me get on to the problems real quick of book five besides the fact I didn't realize it was book five <laughs> I was enjoying myself kind of um she was just really there was so much repeated in these book in this book as well that it was just like can you talk about something else like she would just repeat the same five things over and over again which filled up most of this book like if you cut that out you would maybe have 50 pages from like 230 because she just repeats the same thing like my mum's so embarrassing because she keeps talking about needing to pee because she's pregnant now I'm failing algebra again and again and again and my al algebra teacher is my stepdad so why is he such a bitch I've been forced to go to Genovia for two months of the summer, so I won't see anybody. My boyfriend won't take me to prom. My friend's being a bitch. And it was just, it was just repeated so much. So I was just like, is there a plot to this book? And then we had such a great time with, in one of her classes, she was given, well, in the book, it says Asperger's syndrome. But I'm just going to call it, I'm just going to say autism. <laughs> so she was given autism to write about for one of her classes. And she was complaining that, she, you know, why couldn't she get something cooler to write about like Ebola? And like, if that wasn't enough, it just kind of kept getting worse. <laughs> autism then became like a joke. <laughs> Through the book like she started as she was doing the work on the essay she was then like oh my god i do this i do that and then she literally has like a list of the different like criteria of like the early 2000s for autism and she would put down next to each one like who she knows in her real life lines up with these things and then she was like convinced everybody had autism and it's like for a start you've only put some of these people's names once or twice against these things that absolutely does not mean they have autism <laughs> two low-key maybe you do have autism mia because you made some points but then it went on to like just continually saying like oh well that's really autistic <laughs> like maybe i do have asperger's syndrome and all this sort of shit and i was just like oh my god so um, considering I thought this was book two, I wasn't going to read the rest of the series. And I know five isn't the end. I think it's somewhere in the middle. But I, seeing as I've skipped books two, three and four, I don't think I need to read them. Because that was fucking dreadful. So a pretty mixed bag, not going to lie. I was a bit more hopeful for these to be better I, do, I didn't remember them being this bad and it makes me nervous for when i do my reread <coughs> do my reread of georgia nicholson books because i know i know they say spaz a lot i know they like say things like leather and lesbo a lot and i'm just not ready <laughs> to ruin basically the book series that got me into reading besides harry potter that's already been ruined for me thank you very fucking much <laughs> the other book series also being ruined um i am not emotionally ready for that but we will see we will see but either way, now I'm currently reading Generation Dead, which is a reread as well. I think this one might be better. It was definitely later in the early 2000s. I think it might be 2008 or 9. Can't remember. But I feel like the book kind of uses 
the zombie virus as like I think it could be a good comparison to how disabled people are treated in the real world so I feel like it might have a better commentary hopefully we'll not use so many fucking slurs or just any slurs it'll be great but I mean I don't have my hopes up that high after being absolutely destroyed I then also want to read Percy Jackson because I've been told how amazing those books are and those are you know neurodiverse characters dyslexia and ADHD right I've never read the books I watched the shitty film once I think so I have high hopes for that being better um I don't really know what else I'm gonna read I do have practical magic that I want to read I also have the Maze Runner series or at least the first two or three books so I might try reading the first Maze Runner book and see how that is because mixed bag there too don't know about how good that will be I have a few other like old YA books I want to give a reread and see if I enjoy those or not let's see how bad they are I think my only like definite issue with these old books I'm going to be reading is just that they're so straight cis and white like and able-bodied I'm just so bored of that now I just want to see if these books spark me any joy anymore you know are they worth keeping around to read again seems like the answer is mostly no but We'll see, in it, in it. We'll see. Leave a like and a comment and subscribe to my channel. We're back on the book bullshit again, but I'm also queer and disabled, bitch. So, any of those topics, say something to your soul. Subscribe. I'll see you next week. Bye.